I have a serious problem. I'm all out of beer. Luckily, I'm a problem solver. Let's make some beer. I just said, yes, It just so happens that right now it's kind of St. Patrick's Day. So that kind of works out because I've been in the mood to make a chocolate stout for a very long time. Specifically, I've come up with a recipe for a bourbon barrel chocolate vanilla oatmeal stout. That's, that's a whole lot. If you've never had an oatmeal stout, they are delicious. If you've never had an oatmeal stout with chocolate, even better, add some vanilla, even better, aging in a bourbon barrel, mmm. So good. So let's go ahead and get going on the ingredients. Down in the video description, I went ahead and I put together a recipe for one gallon at a time. And then you could just scale it up as needed. The reason why I did that is because I'm only making a two gallon batch. Why am I making a two gallon batch? Well, because my bourbon barrel only holds two gallons. What I'm gonna be doing to age my beer is using one of these bad motivator barrels. But you do not need one of these bad motivator barrels or one of the, uh, the all wooden ones in order to give your beer that bourbon barrel aged flavor. And we'll get to that in a second. All right, so let's get to the grain bill. So this recipe is gonna have about 70% pale malt, 10% malted oats, 8% brown malt, 6% special B, 2% chocolate malt, 1% chocolate wheat malt and 1% debittered black malt. And the cool thing about most of these malts is stuff like this one, the brown malt, I malted this myself from some seed barley that I bought from the feed store and then I toasted it myself. And I did a video about a whole bunch of different specialty malts that you can make in your kitchen right up here in this video. The special B, that one actually turned out to be an accident, but it's cool because it has this kind of biscuity flavor along with like figs. It reminds me of Fig Newtons. So you get some dark, deep fruit flavor from this malt. Not a lot of recipes that I've seen use Special B, and so I'm, I'm really interested to see how that one reacts. In the malted oats, I bought this one online. If you're not keen to do your own malting, I'm gonna put links for all of the malts that I'm using down in the video description. You can pick them up on Amazon or at your local homebrew shop. We're gonna use cacao nibs or cocoa powder, and that adds some more bitterness to the recipe. So I wanted to kind of balance that by using this deep bitter black malt instead of throwing in something like a roasted barley. Coolest addition is gonna be this Coruscant wheat. This is a chocolate toasted Coruscant wheat made by my good buddy Kevin over at the Grain Bench channel. If you haven't checked him out, I'm gonna put a link for his videos right up here. He made this chocolate wheat malt for me and sent it to me a while ago and I haven't had a reason to use it yet. And it smells absolutely amazing. So, thank you Kevin. All right, so now I just need to get all this ground up so that we can uh, start our mash. So I've got my strike water up to 165 degrees. I got three and a half gallons in here because I'm doing a two gallon batch. Let's get it going. So while our wort is coming up to temperature behind me, getting ready to come up to the boil, I'm gonna go ahead and get my secondary fermentation vessel ready to go. It's gonna be a week or two before we get to secondary fermentation, but we need to prepare it so that we're ready to go when the beer is ready. I'm gonna use this uh, bad motivator barrel. It had water in it, I've drained that out. It's drying out a little bit, but I've got to add some bourbon to this to let it soak into the wood to get some of that bourbon barrel flavor. Now, if you don't have one of these, don't worry. There's a very effective way to get really close to this. You can use some charred white oak staves. Now, this is from uh, my buddy Ken over at Barrel Charwood. These are fantastic. So all you need to do is soak this in some bourbon for about a week and then drop it into a clean vessel. So go ahead and either get this soaking in some bourbon or get some bourbon into your uh, barrel so that you're ready to go when we get to that point.
All right, so the beer finished fermenting after about five days, so I let it sit for a couple more days to settle. And then I drained all the bourbon out of my big barrel and put it back into the small barrel. And I got a sanitized hose and sanitized the spigot on my fermenter bucket, sanitized the outside of my barrel. And then you just drop the hose in and drain in your beer. All right, so now that we've got the beer in the barrel, we've got to add our extra flavoring. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Olive Nation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a little extra boost of chocolate and some vanilla to make this a chocolate vanilla oatmeal stout. You know, we've got a little bit of a chocolate note from some of the grains, we need to add some more. So on the chocolate note, you have two options. You can either add cacao nibs or cocoa powder. And I'm gonna go for cocoa powder because it goes a little bit quicker and you don't need quite so much of it. Now, the one thing I'll point out is that when you're adding cocoa in one form or another, cocoa has a lot of cocoa butter in it and that can really screw with your head retention, especially when you're talking about a nice creamy stout. So we wanna use something that has a lot less fat in it. We're kind of halfway there because we're adding our flavor in secondary fermentation rather than during the boil or during the primary fermentation when it's more likely to strip out some of those fats and, and get them dissolved in the beer. But another step you can take is to make sure that you're using a low fat cocoa powder. It's uh, been processed in a way that it has a little bit less fat in it. Some cocoa powders will have like 30 to 40% fat, but specifically this one, this brown cocoa powder, has about 10% fat in it. So that makes it a little bit better for us in terms of making sure that we don't screw with our head retention. And the cool thing is, I found that information really fast on the Olive Nation website because they have all that stuff listed with the different cocoa powders. It tells you how much is there, along with flavor notes and what it's appropriate to use for. That's one of the cool things about their website is they, they get so detailed. Now here's the other ingredient. You can just use some regular old vanilla beans that you get from the grocery store, but these are Ugandan vanilla beans. Now you might be saying, what does it matter? Where the vanilla beans are grown determines a lot about how they taste, just like with wine grapes and coffee and wherever it's grown, you're gonna get a lot of flavors from the, the terroir, the environment. Ugandan vanilla beans, they have more vanillin in them. They characteristically have a much richer, deeper, and creamy taste to them. And they have notes of chocolate, fig, and raisin. And if you remember, we use Special B in the grain bill for this beer, and that has kind of a fig or fig newton kind of flavor to it. And so I think it's gonna go really, really well with everything that we've got in the beer. So for vanilla beans, it's one to two vanilla beans per gallon. Because these have a little bit more vanilla in them, I'm going to use one per gallon. We're just gonna split them and scrape out the seeds and put all that black gold into the beer. For your cocoa powder, it's gonna be a third of an ounce per gallon, roughly two teaspoons, roughly. If you're using cacao nibs, it's one and a half ounces per gallon. And it's just because this has much higher surface area because it's ground really fine and this does not because it's chunky. Oh, also, if you are using cacao nibs, make sure you toast them. Give them a little toast in the oven just until you can kind of smell them. It just helps to, to bring out the flavor. The cocoa powder is already processed enough. It's gonna, it's gonna release that flavor for you. I love Olive Nation because their website is just chock full of cool stuff. I keep looking on the website just to see if anything there kind of kicks off an idea. I saw these uh, Ugandan vanilla beans and I was telling my wife about them and she said, could you do a chocolate vanilla beer? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> She's got all the good ideas. So if you wanna get any of these products or anything else that you might need, check out the link in the video description and make sure you use this coupon code right here so that you can get a big fat discount on everything that you buy on their website. And to make sure that I still have some contact with the wood surface, because I'm about half a quart shy, so the beer's not actually touching the wood. Um, since I can't turn it on its side, because it can just leak right out of there, I'm just gonna turn it like this. That way I, I still have plenty of contact with the wood surface, and uh, it has a chance to off gas. Easy. So the, uh, the beer keg has been sitting up for about a week, so now it's ready to bottle and keg. I've got my mini keg from Vivor all sanitized and ready to go. It just needs to be uh, filled up. And then I've got some bottles 
that uh, I put one teaspoon of regular table sugar into for bottling, for priming sugar. Let's go ahead and fill these guys up. So as you can see here, it's a little bit of a sloppy process with a lot of oxygen transfer, and I'm not super happy about that. So this is an imperfect process, but it's, it's mainly due to the fact that these barrels are not designed for this. They're designed for spirits only, because you have a spigot that has a tapered neck on it, so it doesn't really want to accept a tube without it slipping off. And unfortunately, the bung is a little bit too small to fit my auto siphon. So the oxygen infiltration is due to me trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, so to speak. If it's a little bit oxidized, it's gonna be for me and I can deal with that. Mainly I just wanted to see if I could get the flavors that I wanted from the chocolate and the vanilla in there and also use one of these barrels to get that bourbon barrel flavor. What I could have done is bothered to check to make sure that my auto siphon could fit down in there. Since it doesn't, I could have drilled out that hole myself to make it a little bit bigger because there's plenty of room on this rubber stopper to fit down in that hole even if it's larger. So I'm going to do some research and figure out the best method for cleaning out a barrel to be able to reuse it for beer. And I think it's not going to be as difficult as if you had a full wood barrel because you just have the one wood surface and you can turn it upside down with whatever cleaning agent like PBW or just plain ethanol uh, to, to clean that and sterilize it and prevent any yeast or bacteria from inhabiting that wood. Now all we've got to do is wait a couple of weeks for our bottles to condition and for the beer to carbonate in the keg. The keg's only going to take about two days, but uh, the bottles will take uh, about a week to fully carbonate and then another week for the flavor to, to adjust and mature. Before we get to the tasting, I just want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters, all of you guys down here. Thank you so much for making this kind of stuff happen. Having you guys as motivators and idea givers, it's, it's, it's really awesome to have this community of you guys with me and uh, I really do appreciate all of your support and you are definitely keeping these lights on. Thanks so much. So I don't know about you guys, but I am definitely ready for a beer. So we're gonna have the kegged beer. It's been kegged and pressurizing for I think five or six days in the fridge. You okay? Camera work is hard. Chocolatey coffee, vanilla. It smells like dessert. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. So if you didn't skip past the me taking it out of the barrel and putting it into this keg, then you know this beer is probably oxidized. And I can confirm it's a little bit oxidized. Not a lot, but it's definitely got a little bit of that, that uh, oxidation flavor in there. But not so much that it's detracting from all the grain flavors and the chocolate and the vanilla. Now here's the interesting thing. Um, I'm picking up a little bit of cherry. I think that's from the Ugandan vanilla beans. Hang on. Let me have my wife do a little taste. So I gave her about that much and um, she drank it all. 
That has never happened. That is the most beer that she has ever consumed at one time, ever. And the first thing that she said was it kind of reminded her of chocolate cherries. So I'm not crazy because the super taster picked out the same thing. Even on the aroma off of the glass, there's like a cherry vanilla kind of thing going on. So this is a, <laughs> this is a winner. I'm really sad that that's already gone. I can't have any more right now because I got to go edit the video. The chocolate character is really distinct. It's not overpowering. I think the vanilla is a little bit higher up on the flavor profile. You're getting vanilla first and then you get the chocolate. And to me, that's kind of perfect. I'm also getting some of that barrel flavor, some of that faint bourbon kind of thing going on. I really want to do that again, so all I got to do is figure out how to clean that barrel correctly so that it doesn't carry an infection. Also, I need to widen that hole so that I can siphon the beer out rather than try to drain it out through the spigot. That's really delicious. I'm so glad that I have a whole gallon of it left. <laughs> that is, uh, that's not going to last very long. All right, so uh, should you do this beer? Yes. If you want to get the Ugandan vanilla beans or the cocoa powder, check the link for Olive Nation down in the video description or in the top comment. Yeah, I think that is it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, if you learned anything, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you want to see what I'm going to do next time, it is going to be based on this beer. If you want to see that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so you can get notified when I post that content. If you want to share your own recipes for uh, chocolate, vanilla oatmeal stouts or chocolate cherry magic beer, go ahead and post those down in the comment section down below. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later. Yes, I'm having another one. It's like dessert.